So I'm David K. Han. I'm uh, Charles Bessie Professor of History here at the University of Nebraska. And um, I'm a historian of science principally, though also very much interested in European cultural or intellectual history, uh, especially in the modern era, meaning from about the Enlightenment to the present. And uh, most of my published research has concentrated on the German-speaking world from the late Enlightenment until uh, the Weimar period, so about 1750 to about uh, 1933. And um, I've published a series of books about 19th century science, especially in Germany. Uh, my latest book is one that I've been working on for a good portion of my career called Helmholtz, uh, A Life in Science, published by the University of Chicago Press, and it appeared uh, about a month ago. Uh, but that's kind of the culmination of work that I had been doing uh, virtually since graduate school, where I worked on a book about a German scientific institution, uh, where uh, quantum physics began in the late 19th, early 20th centuries. And uh, along the way, I also wrote a book about a physicist named DeWitt Bristol Brace, who was the first physicist here at the University of Nebraska. This was in about 1887. And he trained with uh, Helmholtz in Berlin, the man who I study so much. So uh, that's the, that's the uh, bulk of my research, dealing with Germany, the United States, uh, the sciences, the cultural history of science, and so on. Uh, I think there's um, three key takeaways from this book. The first is, that Helmholtz sought to unite all of the different sciences, including philosophy, as much as possible. Uh, he's recently been called in a, uh, the last great polymath. That is, the last person who could really conceivably understand all of the sciences and then some, and to try and put it in some sort of unified field. Uh, I'm not saying that he, was cap that he did it, but he, he sought to do that. So that's one takeaway. Another is that he was very much concerned about the sources of our knowledge. How do we know things? You know, today we talk about fake news, but how do we know what's fake and what's real? And he was very much concerned uh, about the methods that scientists use and the instruments that they use um, to produce their truth claims about the world. And it's, of course, as serious in science as it is in politics. And the third and final takeaway from the book is that Helmholtz's person and his ideas sought to unite the sciences and the arts. He wrote about the scientific foundations of painting, of color, of music. He was himself uh, a serious piano player, uh, loved the theater, loved literature, and he believed that the arts enriched the sciences and vice versa. So these are the, the three big takeaways from the book. Well, I, 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 think, uh, I, I think that bio biography has been uh, treated a little bit too roughly by a lot of people for a long time, meaning that until about the 1960s, biography kind of had, had its way. And then as social history became important, as talking about social forces, gender and women's history, um, and uh, global history as they came in, that kind of put a discount on biography. And um, I'm quite sure that this has changed now in the last decade, especially in Britain and the United States where biography is much more highly valued than it was previously. And I would also remind people that while there are all kinds of movements, social movements, economic movements, and so on, there must be agents who do the moving. That is to say, there must be people who do the moving. 